Welcome to another edition of Random Road Cuts here in southwestern Idaho along Idaho Highway 51. Kind of a lonely highway that runs from southwestern Idaho south into Nevada. And this is one of the more prominent outcrops here along this section of highway. Kind of a windy day, so I thought we'd stop and go through this outcrop as we often do. Uh, if you're new to Random Road Cuts, welcome aboard. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. And what we try to do on Random Road Cuts is look at a, a road cut and work through it together systematically, making observations, seeing what we can learn about the outcrop, and then coming up with some interpretations that may be valid and viable. So let's start with this outcrop and we'll work our way through it. Of course, it always helps to get a little bit of regional context and whatever you know about the area going in is somewhat helpful. So here in southwestern Idaho, we're in the Snake River Plain, but this highway heads south uh, uphill into Nevada, into Basin and Range country. The Snake River Plain we know has a lot of uh, lava flows, basaltic lava flows. It's underlain in some places by rhyolite from the Yellowstone hotspot. And then in this part of Idaho, in the western Snake River Plain, we know in the um, Miocene and into the Pliocene from about 10 to 4, or 3 or so million years ago, there was a large freshwater lake, Lake Idaho. So that's a little bit of context and background info. So as we look at these rocks, we can see they're well layered. There's a lot of different layers in the units themselves. They vary somewhat in color, but generally different shades of brown and buff and peach, a little bit of light gray to white. So some lighter colored material in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and head over there. Um, again, this is a great, great highway and road cut to work on. I think I've seen one car in the about 10 minutes I've been here. So let's go ahead and start down here at road level. And then what we'll do, if we can't get right up the slope here, we might go to the shoulder of the road cup and work our way up a little bit. So here's a section with some of these alternating layers. Uh, we can see there's some different characteristics, different types of layering in here. If we start down here uh, at the bottom with the lowermost unit, we can see this kind of buff colored layer here. Uh, it's layered, it's quite soft. And as you might have guessed already, none of this looks um, like a lava flow, like a basalt. These are all, it looks like these are all sedimentary layers. So different layers that were laid down by sediments being deposited. Of course, our big task here when we talk about sedimentary rocks is determining what sort of environment deposited the rocks. Uh, so let's make our observations first with this lowermost layer here, this kind of beige layer. Um, as we've sort of analyzed the grain size here, it's quite fine grained, mainly mud sized particles, clay and silt together. Uh, working our way up, there is a contact right here with something that's a little bit different. The grain size here is a little bit larger, more of a fine sand. Um, and so this lower layer looks to be mainly a mudstone. And looking at this in aggregate and knowing what we know about the Western Snake River Plain, Obviously we can eliminate the lava flows in the Snake River Plain. Um, we can probably get rid of some of the other ideas we might have, like uh, ash, at least in this section of the outcrop from the Yellowstone hotspot. None of this stuff looks like ash right now or volcanic material. It looks like it's mainly sediment. Um, so these are probably Lake Idaho sediments. And Lake Idaho was a lake that rose and fell over time. I'll try to do another video on it at some point. It's a pretty fascinating story. Um, but it had streams flowing into it. And so we might see a lot of different environments associated with Lake Idaho, from lake deposits to streams flowing into the lake to uh, maybe other types of, you know, flood or uh, floodplains or marshes or other sort of depositional environments associated with that. So it looks like we have this mudstone. And then here we go into this sandy unit. And as we work our way up the sandy unit, um, it does appear like there's some, maybe some trough cross bedding in here as well. Um, you can really see that in here where there's almost like, uh, up and down 
um, layering in here. Like these are maybe ripple marks. So it looks like we're seeing some inner bedded layers of sand. This stuff's a little bit larger grain size. Uh, and then these lighter colored layers that are more blocky and break into chunks, these are mudstones. And so we've got mudstones, sandstones, mudstone, a little layer here, just a few centimeters thick of sand, uh, and then another mudstone, and then another sandstone. So it looks like the alt, we have a lot of alternating layers here, but mainly two different flavors. Um, again, we can see some of these low angle cross beds. So these would indicate streams with the bigger grain size and with these cross beds and also the ripple marks you can see on top here. Let me get the camera right. You can see there's kind of an undulation to the top of that sandstone bed there. It kind of goes up and down like waves. So those are likely uh, ripples forming um, in possibly a stream environment. So these sandy units may indicate stream deposition, um, especially with the cross beds. That seems to be highly likely. Uh, and then it alternates to the mudstones, which are more possibly floodplain deposits, maybe lake deposits. Um, so we're probably seeing some fluctuations in energy level between the finer grain mud particles and then the larger sandy particles. Let's see what else we have here. Um, this whole section in here looks like it's mostly the sand sized material. It's a fine sand, flows out of my hand on the windy day, but it nonetheless is a sand. Work our way over here to where you can see some of the cross bedding a little bit more distinctly. It's very laminated, there's very thin, uh, the internal bedding is very thin and so that speaks to um, you know these constant depositional events and these very thin layers then there's a big change here from the sand back into more of the mudstone size material so a little bit thicker unit here of the mud size particles and let's see if we can get up there uh, safely. Let's see. Maybe not so much here. Let's work our way over and I think we can get up and look at the upper layers. So, so far what we've seen is some of the sandy material, some of the mud sized particles. Here's a little spot that'll allow us to work our way up onto the unit a little bit better. So there's this larger mud size beige unit here. Then it goes back into a darker sandy horizon. There's even, looks like there's some larger material in here. So here's a pebble, um, you know, almost about a centimeter diameter rounded pebble. So again, that speaks to more stream deposition versus something like a a dune or a windblown deposit, the fact that we have particles of this size. So again, more of a higher energy stream setting. Then it looks like it goes back into uh, this finer grained mud sized material. And then another sand unit, it's just sort of alternating back and forth between these different layers. Let's work our way across and then up because there is a bit of a change it looks like coming up so without doing too much analysis here i i would assume that a lot of this is um stream deposits versus lake deposits you've got the sands which represent the channel or the the point bars of this um stream deposit and then these floodplain deposits as this stream systems meandering and moving over over the landscape it's changing the grain size that it can transport then up here near the top of the outcrop we have a very prominent um, change we've got the sand unit down below but then we have a gravel unit here so a higher energy event the streams we're looking more at the stream channel uh, and the stream's able to move larger particles, possibly uh, a flooding event, so it's a higher energy event. We can somewhat 
get a feel for how much um, energy this stream has or had by looking at the largest size particle within it. And so if we find, it's like this particle here. So we've got a clast here that's maybe, um, you know, four or five centimeters in diameter. So that speaks a little bit to the energy level of the stream. Then that gravel unit grades upwards into more sandy type material. You can see the sand actually is coating some of these larger gravel sized particles. That's why they stick up as little lumps. Then that grades up into uh, a nice, really well sorted, the grain sizes are all the same, more of a medium to coarse grain sand. Uh, working our way up, that's maybe about 30 centimeters thick, this whole layer here. And then we get into a, a very different layer just above this white, capping layer here let's break off a little chunk of that and look at it and this looks quite different so the color is different um, the composition of the material looks different as well um, even though the grain size is similar to what we've seen as we look at this in detail this looks more like what we see with volcanic ash and this may be either a pure volcanic ash or tough or it could be a reworked ash, meaning that the ash possibly fell into um, you know, some water body and was a little bit reworked. But I can see some of the, the crystal glass shards in the ash right here. Um, so possibly is some of that material. Uh, hitting it with the acid bottle, we really don't see any sort of reaction there so it's not as calcite rich as some of the other material we, we might see in in maybe these lake or, or stream deposits so um so it looks like it's probably shorelines of lake idaho streams going into lake idaho potentially and then a volcanic eruption here in the snake river plain that deposited this layered ash. Uh, maybe this ash though was, was put down into some water body, maybe the, the river or the floodplain itself, and is reworked a little bit. It is quite layered here, and it does change color a little bit moving up. So pretty interesting, but this one little road cut actually had quite a bit of diversity. Uh, let's head back down and I think I saw one other feature sort of in the central part of the outcrop that was interesting. Of course, up here along the rim, not in place, there's a lot of bigger boulders of looks like mainly basalt, volcanic rocks that were probably deposited by some of the other big river systems that drain out of Nevada, like the Bruno River. Let's find a little spot here and work our way down. Windy day. Okay. So one other feature here that I noticed that we haven't seen yet. is sort of in the central part of the road cut. So again, this lower slope, we can see these alternating mud and sand layers possibly related to stream systems flowing into the western Snake River Plain. We can see the white capping unit, which appears to possibly have some volcanic ash present in it. Um, but right here, and maybe it's a little hard to tell, it looks like there is uh, a small fault running through this road cut and so you might be able to see right here it's nearly vertical there's some offset between the layers and maybe the best place to see it is right here where you can see it's lower on the right side higher on the left side and the offset here is only maybe a few you know 10 to 20 centimeters half a foot or so um, but there is some offset here across this fault so we've got these units being deposited 
and then sometime later, later um, this vaulting of it would have offset them a little bit. I suppose you can see it pretty well right here where this layer here is low, but it's in, been pushed up over there. So down on the side on the right and up on the side to the left here. So just a small normal fault that's offset the layer. So pretty nice little outcrop though. Lots of uh, diversity, maybe an outcrop that most people would whiz right by and not really see a whole lot. But as you get up here close and personal, we've seen some different sedimentary structures, different sedimentary sizes, all indicative of de different depositional environments at the time this unit was being deposited. So pretty sweet. Thanks again for joining me on this edition of Random Road Cuts. Thanks for your support of the channel and geology education. And we'll see you at the next one. Take care.